frozen blueberries. If you don't grow your own berries and you can utilize and do any kind of berries, strawberries, blackberries, blueberries, raspberries, um, I would highly suggest because this tastes the best with frozen berries. Look at that. I mean, sweet. It hasn't been processed. It hasn't been heated up. It has all its nutritional value in it. Um, you know, you can do it no sugar, some maple syrup in there, a little honey. I mean, it's amazing. Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. I'm Doug. And I'm Stacy. Today we're bringing you guys the top five chicken breeds from our homestead. Now this isn't the end all be all list of chickens. There's a lot of different breeds out there. We're going to explain to you guys how we come about picking our breeds, what you might want to look for picking your breed, and we're going to run down our top five. And there's a few criteria that we want to look for, of course, is the temperature. We live in the Midwest and we want to look for temperatures, extreme cold temperatures like we have here, cold, snow, ice, and also very hot, humid temperatures that these birds can tolerate. Yeah, so number one on the list is the Rhode Island Red. It's a deep mahogany in color. It's probably the most recognized uh, hen or chicken on the homestead or in any backyard. It comes uh, from Rhode Island, hence the name, and it's uh, basically been around since about the 19th century. This is a super hardy chicken as far as cold tolerance and heat tolerance. Yeah, and they're, they're good la egg layers too, at between like two to 300 eggs, and they're a very smart bird and a very tolerant bird, uh, and I call them, I guess we call them Rocky Balboa of, of the chickens and the roosters. Yeah, so one thing you want to look out as far as roosters go is they are pretty aggressive, so you might want to keep that in mind if you have um, kids on your homestead or something like that. The roosters do a really good job of protecting the flock. One thing you'll want to notice too, because there's other type of brown chickens out there, is that the Rhode Island Red has black tips on its tail and on its wing feathers. So I think we could set this one free. But the Rhode Island Red definitely comes in uh, number one on my list, but it is in our top five. Next up on our list number two is going to be the Plymouth Barred Rock. Yay! This is my favorite of all of the chickens that we're going to talk about today. I really like them because they're a very calm chicken and they're great for pets because some of these, if you want to use them as pets too and handle them a lot more, this is a great one for that. He's, this is a rooster. This is a rooster here. And he is the most calm, wonderful, and I've always had the best luck with these, these roosters. Yeah, and they're also good for layers. They lay a lot of eggs. They lay all year round, which is wonderful and um, they're good meat birds too and it's just a good consistent and a good a very good brooder too for um you know hatching out some chicks so we i really like these guys yeah that's mr rooster he's our main rooster so now we're going to move on to number three the third one on our list it's getting kind of evasive trying to grab these birds for you guys for everyone we're talking about <laughs> a good time. We, can't catch we them open today. range our birds we don't free range them and we don't have them caged in they're open range so we were able to grab a couple for you guys but now we're just going to move on so the third one on our list is uh, um, the black otrolorp and that is native of our homestead homies in australia so it's from australia yeah. and um, this is a neat bird because it's a bigger kind of bird so it is very good for the meat and it's known for egg production. Lots and lots of eggs, between 250 and 300 eggs. And history... I think on record it says that one chicken actually was recorded at laying almost 365 eggs. So that's like one egg every single day. Yeah, which I thought was like, wow. So it's just a really totally cool bird, very you know mellow bird. And it's good for those two things we like, meat and eggs. Yeah, now we're moving on to number four. <laughs> number four on our list is the Wyandotte. And it's named after the indigenous people of North America. So this is for our Canadian people and us, I guess, here in the United States too. And also this uh, breed has basically been around since the 1870s and it's a very good breed for the wintertime. So remember we talked about diversity in your flock. This bird will probably lay off of egg productions in the summer when the temperatures are over 90 degrees. But when the other birds are kind of slowing down in the wintertime, this bird's going to give you those get eggs. More, right. Yeah. You get you know about 200 eggs or so in those. And the little nifty thing on this one is you know, if you have really, really cold temperature, their combs will freeze. Well, these guys don't have their combs freeze quite as much. We like these because of the cold, cold weather. Yeah. But if you don't have cold weather, maybe this isn't one you want to get, but we like it here. Again, this is our top five. Yeah. Now down to the last one, number five. Now. We're going to talk about our fifth one, which is called the Buff Orpington from our friends in England. 
Across the pond. That's right, across the pond. We like the Buff Orpingtons too because they're a very calm, quiet, just kind of a happy bird and they're beautiful. Actually, just, I mean, gorgeous. They look so pretty when they're just all walking around and they're very just. Kind of like you. That's right, I do. <laughs> I go good with the Buff Orpingtons. And they're just, just a, a calm, it's just a nice one to kind of add a little mellowness to your flock and they are very, very good broody mamas. Yeah. They're very, very good. So. So those are just some of the birds that we like on our homestead. Hopefully these are helpful to you to get to know the birds and to maybe think about what you want to raise on your homestead. Just remember like what we look for is heat tolerant and cold tolerant and a diversified flock, meaning that we want several different birds that, that do a lot. Some lay 200 eggs, some lay 300, some lay in the middle, some lay a little more and in the summer. all these are good for meat production. Yeah, they got to have good meat, meat production. Good, yeah, eggs. So those are like our big And criteria. we like them broody because that way you can hatch out your chickens. You can be more self-sustainable. And I think if you're watching this channel, that's probably a goal. And those buffalo fritons are good list. broody mamas. They yeah. are good ones. And also, like I say, my uh, um, barred rocks are good mamas too. Yeah, but the Rhode Island Reds are still number one, baby. All right, so this is what we're going to do right now is tell you guys who won the Clyde Calendar giveaways. If you guys missed that video, it's right there. And uh, so the first winner up, uh, there's no particular order, it's just three people that we've randomly selected out of the comment section, is Main Street Homestead. Yay. The next one is Lisa Van Valkenbroek. Yay. And the third one is Mr. Bubba Hunt 9. Yay. So we left a message for all three of those in the comment section of that video to get a hold of us so we could get their mailing address and we'll be shipping out their new Clyde calendar Clyde Garden Planner Calendar uh, thingamajig. Make sure you go check out that video. You might want to get one of those for yourself so you're a little more prepared as spring fast approaches. Don't forget, people don't plan to fail. They fail to plan. That's right. And I want you guys to leave below your top five where you are living underneath in the comments below. Ooh, Chickens. Challenge. Yep, we want to know. All right, don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we will see you guys on Sunday. See ya. Hey guys, thanks for watching our video. You might want to check out these videos. And if you want to become a homestead homie, click the picture of us below. We, we will, will see, see you tomorrow. tomorrow.